Raise your hand if you think it's going to be here. Raise your hand if you think it's going to be here. So we have two, and I did this on purpose, by the way. So in this case, let's underdraw both copper cations. So which one of these secondary copper cations do you think is going to be more stable? Secondary. The secondary benzylic, exactly. So what the benzene and the styrene does is it kind of helps us direct which position will act as the base to give the more stable Mokotikov uh, <coughs> uh, cation. And that's the one that's got a benzylic substitution. And so the product you would get for an acid catalyzed hydration then would be the water attacking there. And so we would get this product out. So that's the one thing I wanted to talk about aromaticity in the system, is that the benzene ring will change the stability of a carbocation. So that now we want to form the carbocation using our 232 all of functionalization chemistry at the benzoic position. The last reaction I want to go over, and I'm not going to give a mechanism because I frankly don't think I can draw a good mechanism. Oh, I, I can draw a mechanism for it, but I don't know if it's the correct mechanism. And I haven't found a good mechanism for this reaction that I've liked. So I'm, I just want you guys to know this transformation because it, it will be useful. This is a really useful transformation, especially on tests and stuff. So you can take an aromatic system with a hydrogen and a carbon adjacent to it. All right? And this can be anything, as long as there's a hydrogen. And the hydrogen can be sp, sp2, or sp3. All you need is a hydrogen. So just showing you another, some examples. You can take a molecule like this. A molecule like this, uh, just as long. Yes. Oh, is there? A, uh, did you mean to put those uh, double bonds adjacent to each other on purpose on the first right. molecule? Here. Let's no, on the bottom. Here. This one, yeah. Did you mean to put those double bonds? Wait, no, here? the other one. Uh, so, the, 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 the bonds in the middle one. They're like close to each the other. The black right? one on top. The right. top one. Right. Yeah. Is there a purpose, reason you put those? Oh no, I just wasn't paying attention. Oh. Right. That was an aromatic system. So uh, we have two of our rings here. So as long as you have on your carbon adjacent to the benzene, you have a high carbon hydrogen bond. It doesn't matter the hybridization. As long as you have a carbon hydrogen bond, this chemistry will work. So you take any of these. And you take k 4 So we know KMNO4 is a very good oxidant. We take KMNO4 and we take some H2O and OH minus, so we take some base. So basic KMNO4 in water, and then we heat the heck out of it. And what it will do is replace whatever your substitution is here with just a carboxylic acid. So as long as you have a carbon-hydrogen bond and your benzylic carbon, you can take k 4 and H2O and OH and heat, and it will replace whatever's at that benzylic carbon with the carboxylic acid. So what that means is if you need to take a ben if you need to make a benzoic acid, but you need to have ortho para direction, 
then the way to do it is to do it with a methyl group and then turn it into a cameral pore or something like that. So I'll show you an example in a second. But just realize, pretty much anything at this benzylic position, you can turn directly into a, you can turn directly into a benzoic acid derivative just by adding k 4 and base under aqueous conditions and heating it. Let me show you an example of why this uh, you know, is actually useful. And this is going to be me getting into synthetic examples for the last 15 or 20 minutes. to make parachlorobenzoic acid. And let's hypothetically say you can't buy it, although in the real world you would just buy it. But let's say hypothetically this wasn't available to buy, but we wanted to make this molecule. How would we make it? Well, if you said, well, let's just chlorinate benzoic acid, that would be wrong, because we know if you start from benzoic acid, If we start from benzoic acid, we know benzoic acid is a blank director. It's a meta director. So benzoic acid, the carboxylic acid is a left over drawing group that's going to direct this meta. So if we try to chlorinate this using Al Cl3, or FeCl3 is fine as well, just the Lewis acid, plus Cl2, the product we would get would be the meta chlorination product. That doesn't work. And we could try to do a, and if we wanted to start off with chlorobenzene without this, have I shown you any way to make, to put on a carboxylic acid? Oh, yeah. how have I shown you? Oh, yes, okay, I see where you're going, okay. Oh, but doing electrophilic aromatic substitution, have I shown you a way to put on a carboxylic acid? No, uh, we don't know any electrical aromatic substitutions. Uh, there is a reaction, but uh, we're not going to talk about it until like chapter 19 or 20. Uh, and it will make more sense in chapter 19 or 20. Uh, and frankly, I've never done that reaction in 19 or 20 in my life. And so that probably might not be the best way to go. So what we could do, though, is we could say, well, we know we can turn a methyl group into a carboxylic acid adjacent to a benzene ring, really easily use this game and over. So we know a benzylic anything plus K104 and heat and base will give us a benzylic acid. Uh, of course, to get, to, get the, to get the benzylic acid, we need to quench it with acid, right? The basic condition, if you use, oh, I'll explain this in a second. So the way to go is to start with methyl benzene. Although, you know, let's, let's be more ambitious. Because we want sterics on our side, right? So let's go with... <clears throat> let's go with isopropyl benzene. So something that's bigger. Something that's going to give us more para than ortho. So isopropyl is bigger than methyl, so we'll have a rare percentage of para. So if we can start with this, We can then do our chlorination. So Lewis acid, either AlCl3 or FeCl3. And then throw in our Cl2. Let me do another color for this product so it's easier to see. So we just have our electronically and sterically directed parachlorination using standard conditions. And then, so we just used an alkyl group to do an ortho para direction. And we used a sterically larger alkyl group to dissuade formation of the ortho product and favor 
formation of the uh, parent product. And then all we have to do to get our final product is do the K minimal four conditions. K minimal uh, K minimal four with a little bit of a OH minus and some heat. <coughs> so if so if I did K minimal four and OH minus, where do we get the carboxylic acid and where do we get the carboxylate? We get the carboxylate, right? So then after we do these conditions. Then we do a quick H3O workup, and that will give us a product. So this reaction I just showed you real quickly, it's useful because if you want to make a benzoic acid, now we know we can just do a methyl-directed or an alkyl-directed ortho-para electrophilic aromatic substitution, and then transform the alkyl group to a benzoic acid to get a benzoic acid. So that's something good to know. If you need an ortho or pair of functionalized benzoic acid, just start off the alkyl group and then do your chemistry and then oxidize your alkyl group on the benzoic position to your carboxylic acid. Right. Let me give you another synthetic challenge. And I wasn't planning on going this to my notes, but someone brought this up to me in my office hours. And I was like, that's a great example. I think, I think I'll be inspired by this in some future document. <laughs> so, with fetal craft substitution, what's one of the drawbacks of fetal craft substitution? The rearrangements, yes. There's one more drawback that I didn't talk about that I think is worth mentioning. And that is with field crafts alkylations, you run the risk of getting poly alkylated products. So you run the risk of having it going multiple times. So again, here are our classic field crafts alkylation conditions. And with ethyl chloride, which is uh, what I just drew up here, methyl CH2 chloro, You know, the product you want to get most likely would be uh, ethyl benzene. But here's my question What's going to be more reactive towards lucky aromatic substitution? Our star material benzene or our product ethyl benzene? It's ethyl benzene, right? It's alkyl groups or electron donating groups. And so in this case, our monoalkylated product is going to be more reactive than our star material. So what that means is if you're not careful, uh, we can get a second reaction now, where now our product reacts instead of the starting material. And that will give us a dye. That will give us a dye functionalized, a uh, dye alkylated product. And of course, we just don't get one dialkylated, we get two, right? Because we get rid of both ortho and para dialkylated. So we'll get a mixture of this plus, so the para plus the ortho. And my next question is, are these two going to be more reactive in the starting material? Possibly, right? Well, of course. And so then we also run the risk of then getting a trialkylate and so on and so forth. So if you're not careful with frito Krauss alkylations, you run the risk of getting multiple products, not just the mono, but also the dye and the tri and so on and so forth. So this is a drawback. This is a bummer. Yes? Did you put a protecting group on there to stop it? Yeah, and we'll be talking about that a little bit later. So, that, so yes, you can, you can put an electron or drawn group, and then you'll have you'll better control. Uh, but it, so that's one synthetic strategy. Uh, it's a good one, not the best one though, but it's, it's still a good one and I'm glad you thought about that. That's a, good, that's a very good thought. So in general though, so if you don't want polyalkylation, can, can someone tell me another synthetic strategy to get monoalkylation that maybe takes a few more steps? Acylation, exactly. So if you want to make ethyl benzene, the, the best way to do it, the, the, the quickest way to do it, 
is to do a Friedel crafts acylation. All right. And so now, well, in the acylation, is the product going to be more or less reactive than the starting material? That's going to be less reactive, right? Because an acyl group is electron to drop. So this will stop once. So we'll get a lot better control of stopping once with an acylation. And then we can do one of the reductions I showed you. We can either do the uh, LAH, PBR3, more LAH uh, to take this to ethyl benzene. Or we can do the Wolf Kishner, which I talked about in lecture Wednesday. And remember, the Wolf Kishner. We'll talk about the mechanism in chapter 16. But the Wolf Kishner is hydrazine, so rocket fuel, N2H4, potassium hydroxide, and heat. And then that will oxidize, that, that will reduce any carbonyl to a CH2. So if you want to do a mono functionalization, electrical electronic substitution, that gives us an alpha group, one way you want to consider is doing the friedel crafts acylation followed by the reduction in the CH2. All right, let's do another synthetic example. So, in general, one of the most electron donating groups possible is an amine. An amine is less, nitrogen is less electrolyte than oxygen. So, the low pair of electrons on an amine connected to a benzene ring. are more able to donate the electron density in the pi system. So amines are, in general, more uh, activating than, uh, than a methoxy group. And they're also very ortho para directed Unless you use acidic conditions. All right? And so here's the thing. What did all the five electrophil aromatic substitutions I've shown you have in common? Acid catalyst, right? And all the five use some kind of either Bronsted or Lewis acid catalyst. And so under acidic conditions, amines actually behave as electron withdrawn groups that meta direct. Why? So they should be an electron donating group. But under acidic conditions, I'm doing the chlorination, but the same thing holds true if you use sulfuric acid and nitric acid or sulfuric acid and SO3. What you end up getting and so our aqueous workup is basic now. What you end up getting will be the meta product, and it will be slower than you expected from such a powerful electron donating group. So why, under acidic conditions, either Lewis with aluminum chloride or Bronstad with sulfuric acid, why under acidic conditions do amines become left under drawing meta directors? Nice. Did anyone hear that? <coughs> All right, so pretty much what happens is the first thing that's going to happen is actually the more reactive lone pairs of electrons in the nitrogen are going to attack the Lewis acid. charge in the nitrogen. And so now, because we formed this addict between 
or nitrogen in the amine. And so this is the problem with the analytes. They're too reactive. They're so reactive that they don't just double up and in the here, they also um, get themselves and their actual nitrogen atom attack the acid, whether it be a Lewis or a Bonset acid. And this gives us an ammonium salt with a positive charge in the nitrogen. So now that you have the positive charge in the nitrogen, is it an a, a electron dominating or electron withdrawing group? It's an electron withdrawing group, exactly. So then when you take your Cl2, uh, some more ALCL3 will activate. This is the chemistry will still happen. But now, because it's not an electron withdrawing group, we'll get the meta product. So I always think about stuff like that. That sometimes with, it, with nitrogen, it can be so reactive that it actually acts as a base itself, the nitrogen, and then becomes an electron withdrawing group because it got too excited and grab the Lewis acids itself rather than like the aromatic system uh, do its electrical and aromatic substitution. So that being said, so in general, under acidic conditions, island will give us a better position. But what if, I don't know, some crazy group at SDSU were to develop one of the first neutral electrical and aromatic substitutions and publish it in one of the top organic chemistry journals? <laughs> so what happens now, and I just want to show you this, just to prove to you that amines are indeed normally electron donating groups under neutral conditions, if you use my group's chemistry, where we just use a basic catalyst, and this can go cat period, and then Cl2, we get pure ortho, uh, nearly 100%, sorry, para chlorination. So under neutral conditions, amines are indeed uh, ortho para direct and direct directing and activating. But because most of the stuff we care about in this class, and I'm not going to test you on my own stuff. I'm not that egotistical yet. <laughs> I'm not going to test you on this, but I just wanted to show you that amines are indeed electron donating. Uh, and, but under acidic conditions, they became the ammonium. I'm just giving one quick data point. Why well, actually? I think we agree. Amines are basic, right? So if you throw in an acid, we're going to protonate the amine, and it's going to become an electron donating group. Sorry, an electron withdrawing group. So how do we get around this? So I showed you how, how to get around it now in 2015, but you know that's with new chemistry. How do we get around with it now in this class? Well, the way you do it is through what we call a protecting group. So you take your analyte and you take an acid chloride. You don't need a Lewis acid for this. If you do a Lewis acid, you'll get you might get functionalization here. But if you just take an acid chloride and, and your typical solvent like dichloromethane, what's going to happen, and this is chapter 16 and 17 chemistry, so don't worry about the explicit mechanism now. But if you take an acid chloride and an analyte, what you do is you make an amide. You make an sp2 amide.